clap a little louder than before. I wanna sing a little louder than before. People's Church family. Indeed, isn't it good to know that our praise that we raise, our worship belongs to God. We praise Him, we worship Him, not because of, not because of good life, not because of health, not because of the provision, but we worship Him, we praise Him in spite of. Welcome to Church Online. We are so glad that you joined us today. Let me just remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, and above all, what is more important, you cannot afford to be blessed alone. Please share this link. You have family, you have colleagues, you have friends. Please share the link with them so that they may be 
equally blessed. And for those who are joining us for the very first time, a very warm welcome to you. We would like to connect with you. And we cannot do that unless we have your details. Please fill in the welcome card by clicking the description box below. After you have filled in the details, that's when we'll be able to connect with you. Thank you for joining us once more. We love you so much and we appreciate you joining us. I'm going to read a scripture in order to encourage you. I, I, I plead with you to personalize it. Grab this scripture for yourself so that you may be blessed. It's from Psalm 121 verses 1 to 8. I'm using the new King James Version. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your food to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. You are a very good God. You are a loving Father. Thank you for this blessed day for us to come together. It's a day of celebration. We are celebrating your goodness. We are celebrating your protection. We are celebrating your faithfulness. We are celebrating all that you have bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you for your word that encourages us even this day. That you are protecting us wherever we go. You do not sleep, you do not slumber. Thank you, Father, that we are protected under the shadow of your wings. Thank you that, Father God, every minute detail about our lives doesn't catch you by surprise. We give you the praise, we give you the honor, we give you the adoration. All our hope is in you. Like David of old, we lift our eyes to you and our help comes from you. Bless the proceedings for this day. Take your glory, take your place, for you alone deserve the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Sit back and relax as we enjoy a time of worship together. At the end of the worship, Sister Palesa will give us an offering message. Jesus, you are glorified. Yes. You are glorified, oh Father. We just want to worship you. We live to worship you. We live to worship you, oh Father. To worship you.
Good morning, church. It's good to share the offering message with you today. Let's read the Bible from the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 29, from verses 1 to 16. It reads, Gifts for building the temple. Then King David turned to the entire assembly and said, My son Solomon, whom God has clearly chosen as the next king of Israel, is still young and inexperienced. The work ahead of him is enormous. For the temple he will build is not for mere mortals. It is for the, for, for the Lord God himself. Using every resource at my command, I have gathered as much as I could for building the temple of my God. Now there is enough gold, silver, bronze, iron, and any wood, as well as great quantities of onyx other precious stones, costly jewels, and all kinds of fine stone and marble. And now because of my devotion to the temple of my God, I am giving all of my own private treasures of gold and silver to help in the construction. This is in addition to the building materials I have already collected for his holy temple. I'm donating more than 112 tons of gold from offer and 262 tons of refined silver to be used for overlaying the walls of the buildings and for the other gold and silver work to be done by the craftsmen. Now then, who will follow my example and give offerings to the Lord today? Then the family leaders, the leaders of the tribes of Israel, the generals and the captains of the army, and the king's administrative officers all gave willingly. For the construction of the temple of God, they gave about 188 tons of gold, 10,000 gold coins, 375 tons of silver, 675 tons of bronze, and 3,750 tons of iron. They also contributed numerous precious metals, which were deposited in the treasury of the house of the Lord under the care of Jehiel, a descendant of Geshen. The people rejoiced over the offerings, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord, and King David was filled with joy. David's Prayer of Praise Then David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly. O oh Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, may you be praised forever and ever. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours. O oh Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. Wealth and honor come from you alone. For you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand, and at your discretion, people are made great and given strength. O oh, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you, and we give you only what you first gave us. We are here for only a moment. Visitors and strangers in the land as our ancestors were before, before us. Our days on earth are like a passing shadow, gone so soon without a trace. O oh Lord our God, even this material we have gathered to build a temple to honor your holy name comes from you. It all belongs to you. When I read this scripture... I was very encouraged by how the children of Israel so generously and willingly gave to the building of God's temple and how clear they were that their giving is to honor God and that everything came from God and comes from God. Even this morning, as we are given a similar opportunity to be part of building God's temple, I encourage us to give willingly, generously, and wholeheartedly of ourselves, our time, and our financial resources. And with that, we must always remember, we give God what he first gave us. For without all he has given us, 
we would have nothing to give back to him. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this wonderful time that you've given us. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to give back to you what you have given to us, O oh God. Lord, as we come before your presence this morning, O oh God, we open our hearts to give to you willingly, O oh God, wholeheartedly, O oh God. Thank you for the provision that you've given us. And Lord, we just honor your holy name this morning. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Good morning, church. I'm Godfrey Tembo, and I'll be your news reader for today. Let's have a look at what's happening in our church. Good day, church. Christ, our Lord and Savior, led by example. Several times in scriptures, you will read that he went out to pray. So it is also important for us as believers, as his followers, to spend time in prayer. Church, I'm quite excited about our Tuesday morning dawn prayer meetings. I would like to invite you to join us every Tuesday morning between 5 and 6 as we cry out and lift our voices up to our Heavenly Father. Between 5 and 6 every Tuesday morning. To be able to join us, please contact me on the number that is flashed on the screen now. Contact me on this number so that I can send you the link so that you are able to join us as we pray together every Tuesday morning between 5 and 6. A praying church is a victorious church. You are furthermore reminded of our, of our Wednesday prayer meeting at 6 o'clock, ending at 7 o'clock. Designed had their first in-person evening this past Friday. Due to school holidays, the next Friday night youth will be on the 15th of October. Game Changers Conference is taking place on the 1st and the 2nd of October, hosted by Cornerstone Church in Pretoria. The conference will also be live streamed here at church. Please take a look at the following video for more information. Men of Destiny Conference is happening on Saturday, the 23rd of October, 2021, from 9.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Cornerstone Church. Pastor Odu Rashavambela, as the guest speaker, will be encouraging us around the theme, Take Charge, Part the Waters, from Exodus chapter 14, verse 16. See you there. I've got great news for young adults. Reflect is relaunching on the 5th of October at 6 p.m. If you need more information, send us a WhatsApp message on the number appearing on the screen. Thank you. It's now time for us to listen to the word of God. I believe that your hearts are prepared in order to receive from the Lord. Please help me welcome our senior pastor as he brings God's word to us. Thank you very much, Pastor Eunice, and thank you for anchoring our service, our program today. Welcome to People's Church Online. There is no author in the Bible who wrote about the importance of being in the house of God like David. In Psalm 122, verse 1, he says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Elsewhere, in Psalm 84, verse 10, he says, For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. 
I would rather be a dog keeper in the house of my God. I'm excited today to bring God's word to you. And I believe it will speak into your life. It will speak into your heart. And I believe you are equally excited to receive the word of God. Today we are going to read from Matthew chapter 14. We are going to read from verse 22 to 32. The theme of our message today is step out of your boat. John Outbeck wrote a book. I highly recommend this book. And the title of the book is, If you want to walk on the water, you've got to get out of the boat. So the theme of our message today is, Step out of the boat. This is the message that encourages us to get out of your comfort zone. We are preaching today. We are teaching today. As long as you are stuck on your comfort zone, you will not experience what God has for you. Let us quickly read this scripture from verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now, when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Verse 28, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? The last verse, verse 32. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Now, this miracle where Jesus walked on the sea, and called Peter to walk on the water with him. It's the only miracle that we read in the Gospels where a person walked on water. But this miracle is preceded by the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves of bread and fish. It is the only miracle involving so many people. Matthew tells us there were 5,000 men. We know women and children would be more than men. So we can estimate there were more than 20,000 people who were impacted by this miracle of Jesus. Now, after this miracle, glorious as it was, we expect Jesus to discuss the miracle. Jesus to bask in the glory of this miracle. But it does not take place. Jesus is urgent. He sends his disciples away and the crowds also disperse. We find this in verse 22. It says straight away. In the King James Version, he sent them away. 
in the Webster Bible, he was constrained to send them away. In the Message Bible, he insisted that they should go away. But why? Why would Jesus do that? He is God. He is the Son of God. He knew what was in the hearts of people. The answer is found in John 6 verse 15. A version of this miracle. The Jews were affected by the miracle and they wanted to make him king. That's where the problem was. But you ask me, Pastor, where is the problem? Jesus is king of kings. So when the Jews wanted, for the first time, they realized he is the promised Messiah. So they wanted to proclaim him king. But it was a temptation. Jesus knew very well. Yes, he came. He is king of kings. But it was not time for him to be crowned as king. He was very clear about the sequence of the process of his coronation. Jesus knew and he teaches us a principle. There is no shortcut to the crown. There is no shortcut to success. He knew very well before the crown there was to be the cross. He knew very well before he would ride a white horse coming crown king of kings. He had to ride a donkey before the glorious crown. They had to be the crown of thorns. What a principle that we are learning. We are learning that there is no easy way to God's destiny or success. When you see a person standing on the mountaintop and you ask them, how did you arrive here? They can't say, I don't know. It just happened. It was hard work to climb this mountain. When you see a person finishing a race, crossing the finishing line ahead of others, they can't say, I don't know how it happened. There was hard practice. There was hard preparation. When you see a mega church such as this one that is shown on the screen, you would realize that hard work took those who are leading this particular church. Jeff Bezos, the richest man on earth, his motto is he believes that in order for you to succeed, you should take step by step ferociously. Brethren, people's church, there is no elevator that is going to take us where we ought to be. We are going to work very hard. And indeed, this is the principle that we learn here. Jesus had to break the temptation of circumventing the cross and being crowned king of kings. After dismissing his disciples, he went to the mountain and he prayed and he continued almost all night in prayer. That is a sermon for another day. That prayer breaks all temptations, all situations that threaten our destiny, what God had meant us to experience. Yes, indeed, he was praying, and his disciples were on the boat as they were sailing to the other side. We read that their boat was buffeted by storms. Now, they had sailed something like seven and a half miles. The fourth watch, that is around 3 to 6 a.m. The boat is in trouble. The disciples are in trouble. 
The boat is buffeted by storms. Jesus shows up in the midst of your storm. That is a sermon for another day. And Jesus is walking on the water. The disciples are afraid. They think it is a ghost. But Jesus says, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter, who is known, said to be the spokesperson of the disciples, says, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come to you. Jesus says to him, come. This is the juicy part of the sermon, of the text. Get out of your boat. Step out of your boat. Step out of your comfort zone. Now, in order for you to step out of your comfort zone, for Peter to go out of that boat, he had to overcome certain obstacles. Maybe the other disciples said to him, Peter, there is no one who ever walked on water. You are going to sink. John Oldberg says, if you want to walk on water, you must get out of the boat. There are failure messages in your comfort zone. There are people who are saying to you, never in your circles, in your family, no one has ever achieved what you are talking about. You have to overcome failure messages. Norman Wang says, it is difficult for God to steer a parked car. In other words, if you want to drive a car, it must be in motion. It is difficult to try and steer the car when it is stationary. It has to move. You have to take a step of faith in your life for you to experience a miracle, a breakthrough from God. Martin Lloyd-Jones says, faith is refusal to panic Praise the name of the Lord. Peter refused to panic. Yes, the situation was challenging. There were waves. Never ever did he walk on water before. Howard Hendricks says, Faith can never be exercised by proxy. There is no such a thing as correspondence course for swimming. If you want to learn how to swim, you must be prepared to get wet. You can't go into a lecture wall and be lectured and be given a certificate. Now you can swim. You must get into the water. This is what many of us want to do, to experience. We want to experience God's best. But we want to stay in our comfort zones. William Carey says, if you Expect great things from God. You must attempt great things from God. John Oldbeck also says, Deep within its Christian lies the same faith and longing for a better place as it was in Peter. Shout the name of the Lord in my life, in your life. As Christians, there is a longing for a better life and longing for a better place. I believe in the leadership of this church. There should be a longing. We want to be better. We want to go to another level. My specialty in reading the Bible is the book of John or the Johannine literature. And I studied in depth John chapter 6, the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves of bread. Now, we know very well from those few loaves and fish, there was multiplication. But I wish to ask you a question. At what point 
that the miracle take place? At what point that did the bread actually multiply? Not in the hands of the lad. Not in the hands of Jesus. Jesus prayed for the provision of one man, of one person, one boy. Now, the prayer did not multiply when Jesus prayed. Yes, the prayer made a difference potentially in the bread and the fish. And Jesus took the provision and gave it to the disciples. The bread started to multiply when they gave the bread to the next person and to the other person. I firmly believe when we get out of our comfort zone, that's where we are going to experience not addition but multiplication. Pastor, what is your message today? What is the thought of the message today? Get out of your boat. Get out of your comfort zone and you will walk on water. You will experience your miracle. I was called to preach when I was a teenager and I had a condition. I was a stammerer. I was a stutterer and I believe I had excuses just like Moses. I cannot speak but I knew God has called me to preach. I did not wait until I was healed but I started to struggle I started to teach I started to preach and in the process of doing that God made me to communicate clearly his word because I took a step of faith I stepped out of my comfort zone now Jesus calls Peter. Jesus walks on water. And he invites Peter to walk in the realm where he is walking. Where he is operating. Getting out, stepping out of your comfort zone. Actually, Jesus is inviting us. You are operating on a particular level. But I'm calling you to operate where I am operating. I'm walking on this miracle. Yes, there is force of gravity. But this was created by myself. I'm inviting you to walk where I am walking. Ephesians 2 verse 4 to 6. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by the grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Jesus. We have to unpack this text. We have to understand this text. Also in Romans 8 verse 11. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Because of his spirit who lives in you. These two verses are very clear. The power that rose Jesus from the dead is the very same power that is operating in us. But I like Ephesians 2 verse 6. That when God raised Jesus from the dead, Dead. We were also raised up together with him and he seated us together with him in the heavenly realm. Where is Jesus? The scriptures inform us he is sitting or standing 
at the right hand of God. So according to the scripture, when the resurrection took place, when Jesus, as the head of the church, rose up, was raised from the dead, the church potentially was raised up and seated with him in the spiritual realm. Now, the head does not come out of bed and leaves the body in bed. The body follows the head. This is exactly what happened. It's not literal, but it is metaphoric that as Jesus is seated, Jesus is standing at the right hand of God, the church is also raised up and seated with him there. Now, right hand, this has to do with power. Now, in the Western sense, when you say you are my right hand man, right hand person, you are second in charge. But in the Eastern sense, where the Bible was written, in an African sense also, you have the same power, you have the same authority. In other words, being raised, seated together with Christ, right hand of the Father, we have the same power, we have the same authority. In other words, when I get out, when I step out of my comfort zone, I will operate the same realm of power and authority where Jesus is operating. The thrust of our message today is get out of your comfort zone. Somebody says a ship in a hammer is safe, but that's not what ships are made for. Let us get out of a comfort zone. Get out of the harbor and cruise and work and sail where there are challenges. I want to believe God is speaking to someone today in your personal life, in your career, in your family space. There are things you are dreaming about. There are things you have been praying about. God, if you could do this, I want to say to you, it is possible. Get out of your comfort zone. Somebody says a long journey is started by only one step. It takes one word to start a powerful prayer. It takes one tree to start a forest. One vote to change a nation. One beam of light to fill the whole house. It will take one step step of faith to step out and experience your miracle. I pray today. I wish to pray for you today. Like Peter, get out of your comfort zone. I read a, a, an article in this particular American Assemblies of God Christian magazine. There was a severe drought in a village. And the church had, not only for themselves, but also for the community, a prayer meeting. Pray that this drought should be broken. There's an afternoon around 3 o'clock where the church and other community members met and pray for the rain. They invited a guest preacher, an old retired pastor. Now, after going to the pulpit, the preacher said to the people, before I start preach, I want to find out who brought their umbrellas 
all their rain suits. It was only the preacher, but also the granddaughter of an elder. And she asked the granddad, where are we going this Sunday afternoon? He, she, he said to her, honey, we are going to pray for rain. We are going to pray that God should bring us rain. This little daughter, childlike faith, took her own little umbrella and put it in the bag. In that audience, only two people believe that when we pray, God hears our prayers. And the preacher said, it's unfortunate that some of you, many of you, did not bring your umbrellas. But I want to assure you that we are getting out of our comfort zone of unbelief. I'm going to preach. I'm going to pray. And I believe that as we go out, God is going to bring rain. I pray that it rains on you. But you should get out of your comfort zone of unbelief. As they were going out, the sky started to and it rain. My brothers and sisters, people's church, I want to say it's going to rain on us. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's going to rain on this church. God is going to revive us. We are going to fulfill the redemptive call that God has given to us for this nation in the name of Jesus, I believe that God's word has spoken to you today. Get out, step out of your comfort zone into the zone of your miracle. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you very much for tuning in and receiving God's word for you today. Step out out of your comfort zone. Maybe you have been listening to this message and you have not accepted Christ as Savior and Lord. I want to encourage you today. Receive Jesus. Open your life. Open your heart and he will come into your life. If this is you, a number is flashed on the screen please phone us uh, and we will reciprocate the call. We will contact you and help you further. Jesus is our Savior. If that is you, let me pray this prayer with you. Say these words after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I cannot save myself. I pray that you forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my past. I pray today and I believe that through these words, I'm saved. I'm a child of God. And my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name, my life will never be the same. Amen and amen.